Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do a Frankenstrat style paint job with spray cans on a, a Stratocaster. So what I've got here is a cheap Squire Stratocaster and we're going to start by taking it apart and then we're going to scuff it up and do the paint job. So I'll show you how all the taping works and how to go through that process. Now I've selected a black uh, body. Um, I didn't see a red or white one in the shop. So, or when I bought it, um, so I, I went with black. How you approach this is going to depend just a little bit on which color you've selected, but the starting steps are the same regardless. What you're going to want to do is scuff it up with uh, 600 or 800 grit paper, or, do I have one? I don't have one. Or a scotch bright pad. Oh, I do have one. Uh, either red or gray. So, you're going to end up with a very similar effect regardless of how you approach this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the sandpaper and I'm just going to go over it all with my 600 grit paper. Now, what you should do, if you can, and I know not everybody has this, but I mean, it's not that difficult to either get one or make one, is use a block for the flat areas and that'll keep you from sanding too hard into your edges and stuff, well, as much and uh, it will just generally make it easier so that you're not putting ridges in there by accident. If you are going to sand with your hands, try to avoid using your fingers. I know they make it, it seems like it's easier to get good pressure with your fingers, but again, you're risking putting ridges and stuff. So try and use your palm to do that, okay? And you got to sand the whole surface and try and get that gloss off of there. Now, I need to be clear about this, I don't mean take the clear coat off. You don't have to take the clear coat off of your guitar entirely. You just have to get rid of that gloss. The gloss is, uh, you know, it's too smooth and, and the new paint won't stick to it. So you have to sand that just enough so that it's dull. So I'm going to kind of show you what I mean here in a minute. I'm going to start, I'm going to go back to using a block. I'm going to start by scuffing this up, up with the paper. And this really doesn't take long. I'm going to go over it now with the gray scotch bright just to get any of those last edges and stuff because the scotch bright's a little more flexible. It gets into spots that the sandpaper has trouble getting into. All right. Let's wipe that off. And now I'm going to show you the difference. So this is the back of the guitar. You see how glossy that is? And this is the front. It's much duller. So that's what you need to do. You need to go over the whole guitar, take that gloss off of there. That took me about three minutes, and now this is all scuffed up. All that gloss is dealt with. It's got a nice dull look to it. And it's ready to go. The, uh, the paint will stick to it now. It is a little dirty though, because I just spent a bunch of time sanding it. So next up we have to clean it. What I have here is wax and grease remover. You need something that's going to act as a degreaser before you go to paint it. Um, so I'm going to do that now before I start taping it and everything. Another thing that acts as a de degreaser is, well there are a bunch of things like naphtha works, uh, lighter fluid works fine, Windex works fine. So you don't need to go to an automotive shop or anything like that and go buy wax and grease remover. Um, don't use a heavy solvent because you'll mess up the paint that's on there and you're kind of relying on that as a base for your new paint. We're not going to be priming this or anything. It's already sealed up. It's already been primed by, in the factory and this paint's already on there. That's going to act as our primer essentially for our new stuff. So. What I'm just going to do, like I said, is go ahead with my wax and grease remover, give this thing a very thorough wipe down. I'm going to take this dirty cloth out from under it. And I'm going to get all those surfaces that I am planning on painting nice and clean. There are some places on here that we don't want to get paint. Among them, the neck pocket. Don't want to get paint in there, that cavity. Uh, or the neck won't fit properly. The pickup cavities, it probably doesn't seem like a big deal, 
it's not a huge issue, but there is conductive paint in there, and ideally, you don't want to get paint in there uh, messing with that conductive paint, or your guitar will be noisier, it will buzz more, because that conductivity won't be there anymore to create the shielding. Now, that's less of an issue if you are going to be copper taping the inside after, or if you're going to be respraying the conductive paint, but I find that it's best to just mask all of that off. Alright guys, so now this thing's all sanded up, uh, sorry, sanded and cleaned up. All of the cavities are taped, so everything that I don't want paint on, period, is taped off and it's going to stay taped off until I'm done painting. Now it's time to start taping our design on there. So that's how we're going to create this design uh, for the Frankenstrat. We're going to use a few different sizes of tape. It's kind of up to you what kinds you want. Uh, I don't have the specs on the specific exact Frankenstrat, like a direct replica, because that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing kind of just like a general how the Frankenstrat thing is done. So the Frankenstrat guitars are black, white, and red, predominantly red. I recommend using some kind of reference picture so that you, uh, you get an idea of what you're doing here. But my guitar is already black. So you're going to have to think a little bit now about what color is your guitar, what do you need to do. Uh, if it's not white, red, or black, you need to start with one of those. You're probably going to start with the red because it's the most, you know, the most predominant color in there. Spray the whole thing that color and worry about your masking from there. Mine's black, so what I'm going to do is tape off the areas that I want to keep black. Then I'm going to spray red because it's my most, again, predominant color, so I'm going to put a little bit of tape on here to, to protect the areas that are staying black. I'm going to spray my red, let that dry, and then I have to leave the black areas taped off because I don't want to change them to white. What I'm going to do after that is tape off the areas that I want to keep re uh, red. Sorry. <laughs> so there's kind of going to be a little bit of a different technique to that part, and I'll show you. But if you're starting with red, it's going to be a little different for you. If you're starting with white, it's going to be a little different. So what I'm going to do is just put a small amount of tape in the few areas that I want to keep black right now. And then when I actually go to spray this, the, the number of areas that are going white, since most of the guitar is red, I'm probably just going to tape off little spots where I can spray my white in, as opposed to taping off the entire guitar and removing the areas that need to go white. So this is pretty straightforward, really. You're just going to take your various types of tape uh, if you're using several different thicknesses. If you don't have several thicknesses, you can compensate for that by laying two sets of a thinner tape parallel uh, to make a wider piece. But anyway, take your various kinds of tape. I've got the three different widths here that I'm using. And just lay out a pattern. Lay out the pattern that you would have stay black, in this case, when you spray. Or whichever color you're trying to keep there. That's the area that you want to tape off is what's staying that color. Here I am uh, actually spraying my red. So I've sped this portion of the video up. Uh, two times because it's it's getting to be kind of long and, and this took a little while. I spray the edges first. Uh, the reason I do that is so that the overspray from spraying the edges gets captured by the paint on the faces afterward so I don't have to worry about it making the paint on the faces less smooth. You'll notice I'm shaking this can a lot. Uh, there's actually a bit of a problem with it. It was a brand new can and a lot of the pigment got stuck in the bottom for some reason. And I, I could tell that it didn't really feel right. Ended up uh, going on a bit thin. But anyway, I do the edges first, and then because of the way this is taped off, you can see me kind of spraying it in sections. You can do that, or you can just kind of spray the entire guitar the way I normally would. Um, if you haven't seen me do that before, I have other tutorials uh, about painting guitars with spray cans, so you can check those out if you need to. But this way works just fine. I just spray it in sections based on which areas are taped. I do, uh, obviously, the same for the back. And I'm going to go in and do two coats of this red. Uh, that way I can get, you know, enough coverage. I don't want to do three because, for one, it's not really necessary. It's a fairly uh, 
high color value. It co coats relatively well in two. And also, I'm going to leave ridges because of the tape here. So I'm trying to avoid having those be more significant than necessary. So I'm only going to go through and do the two coats. This one, like I said, is, is sped up to uh, two times speed. Uh, I'm about to come in for my second coat, which will be sped up to four times. So that covers the first steps. That's how you prepare your guitar. That's how you paint it. Uh, if you want to check out my disassembly tutorial, it's pretty straightforward, but you can do that. The link's in the description. And uh, once you've got your first co color on here, I recommend you give it a couple days to dry. That's what I did. That's what, uh, what I'm going to be doing, at least. And uh, you can come back and see how we progress on to our next color here. So once this dries, I'm going to have to scuff it up, tape again to protect the red, and we'll come back in with the white. So stay tuned for, uh, for episode two, if you will, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.